Hi students, we need to talk about uh, acid strength and base strength in this lecture. So in the last lecture, we looked at this table here and we looked at acids versus their conjugate bases and bases versus their conjugate acids. And we said that when you have a very strong acid, That its, that its conjugate base will be very weak. So perchloric acid right here is a very strong acid and its conjugate base is very, very weakly basic. And as we go down this way, we decrease in acid strength. So you can see we have the strong acids that you guys should know, like sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. And then we go all the way down to water down here, which is a super weak acid. It's also a very weak base. Water can go either way, remember that, depending on what you put it with. And we can see as we go down right here that our base strength is increasing. So right here we have hydroxide. So we have a very strong base. And that means that its conjugate acid will be what? This will be a very weak conjugate acid. And remember that conjugate acids and conjugate bases are just acids and bases. It's just that we use those terms when we're talking about pairs so we can differentiate between the two. Now, if we go up into the middle and we have something like acetic acid, there we have a weak acid. And so its conjugate base, acetate ion, is a weak base. So it has basic activity there. All right, so we've taken a look at strong and weak, but now let's put a number on it. So in just, uh, instead of just saying something qualitative, like very strong or strong or weak or very weak, let's look at the numbers for this. So we did neutralization reactions after that, and then we did molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations. And then we came to this chart right here, and we said we would see this in the next lecture. So here we have our strong acids again. So up here we have our very strong acids. And as we go down, the acids get weaker. So carbonic acid down here, that's one of our weak acids. And this chart continues on to the next slide down here. So on the bottom down here, we have the very strong bases. And of course, their conjugates over on this side are going to be very weak acids or very weak conjugate acids. So the arrows are different. So we have increasing strength for acids that way, and we have increasing strengths for bases going this way. Now notice that there are numbers in here. So at the very top, we just have words large and very small, and then in between We've got number of values here. And then at the bottom, we have the opposite. So over here, we've got large, where we have the very strong. And we have very small over here, where we have very weak acids, or very weak conjugate acids over here, okay? So what do these numbers mean in the middle here? Well, we're gonna talk about that. So the acid ionization constant. So this is another K value. So remember in the last chap chapter when we said that K is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of reactants, and that was at equilibrium. 
So that was the ionization or the dissociation constant. So we we're looking at how much product versus how much reactant we had. And we said that if K was a large value, then that meant that the number on top there, the numerator, was a large number and the number on the bottom down here was a small number. So that reaction would have been product favored because we have a lot of product being produced. And if our reaction just gives us a little bit of product, the concentration of the product, so the numerator would have been small, and the concentration of the reactant would have been large because the reactant didn't make very much product, and that would give us what kind of K? That would give us a small K. So when K is large, you have a lot of product, and when K is small, you don't have a lot of product, you have a lot of reactant. So how is K related to Ka? Well, let's take a look at this. So if we were looking at just straight old K, what we'd have is we'd let our generic acid react with water, and the acid would give off a little bit of H+, plus, and that would hop onto the water and give us hydronium. So hydronium is one of our products, and the A minus is also the other product. So we would go ahead and we would put the concentration of both products up here in the numerator. So the concentration of A minus times the concentration of hydronium, H3O plus. And on the bottom, we would put the concentration of the reactants. So we'd have the concentration of our acid there. And then we'd have the concentration of what? What is the other reactant? It's water. Okay, and then you look at this K and you look over here at Ka and you notice that something is missing from Ka. And that's the concentration of water. And we can think about this a couple of ways. Now the first way we can think about it is that you've got a beaker and you have a zillions of water molecules floating around, tons and tons of them. And only occasionally do you have an A minus, an HA, and an H3O plus. So what happens is that the change in concentration of HA, A minus, and H3O plus is meaningful because there's only a few of them. But when you change the concentration of the water, there's so many of them that basically your concentration of water is the same before and after. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, think about it this way. If you have $4 in your pocket and somebody gives you a dollar, is that meaningful? Like, does that mean something to you? Of course it does. But if you have $2,000 in your pocket and somebody gives you a dollar, about how many dollars do you have? You still have about $2,000. So it doesn't really matter when you have so many of them. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the water. So what we do is um, we make an estimation and we just go ahead and we ignore the concentration of the water because it doesn't really change. And when we ignore that, that, that gives us this value over here, Ka. Now, the other way that we can think about it is this. We can say, okay, let's not do that. We don't want to do any of that magic of ignoring things. And we want to go ahead and we want to multiply both sides by the concentration of water. And that means that the concentration of water cancels out on this side. And then we can just call K times the concentration of water. We can call that Ka. And either way, it's going to give us Ka that looks like this. So we just are going to ignore the concentration change of the water there. Now, like with regular K, when Ka is large, that's going to mean that you've made a lot of product. So you're very product favored. And this means that you've got a strong acid because what do acids do? They give away H plus. And if you're giving away H plus, you're creating a lot of product. Now remember 
that we use H plus and H3O plus interchangeably in chemistry. So if you're looking at this going, wait a minute, I don't see H plus. Yes, you do. It's right there. It's on the water. Now, if you have a small Ka, that means that your numerator up here is small. So you did not make very much product. You did not release very much H plus. That should make sense. If you're a weak acid, you're not giving off very much H plus because the definition of an acid is something that gives off H plus. So that would mean that you had a lot of your acid hanging around. So you have a lot of your reactant. So if you have a small Ka, you have a weak acid and this is reactant favored. It means that this reaction right here, it favors the reactants sitting around, not the products sitting around. So if we go back to the chart, what we will notice is that the numerator for Ka, so remember we have Ka is equal to A minus times H3O plus over the concentration of the intact acid. So remember HA is a general uh, way that we write acid. So up here it just says large because this number on top is so large and this number on the bottom is so small that the bottom is approaching zero. And if we take math, we learn that if you have a zero in your denominator, that becomes undefined. So the top number becomes so large that we just call it large. And then as we go to weaker and weaker bases, we see that we can put a number on it, okay? So hydronium, right there. Hydronium has a Ka of one. So that's the easiest one to do there. Okay, and as we go down the chart, you can see that the exponent here starts getting smaller. So we go from negative two all the way down to carbonic acid right there that has a negative seven. So it's 10 to the negative seven. So the Ka is getting smaller. As the Ka gets smaller, the acid gets what? Weaker. As the Ka gets larger, the acid gets stronger. Okay, so let me switch to eraser and erase some of that right there. Okay, so that's what those numbers mean. So let's take a look at acetic acid right here. So there's a few different ways that we can write the equation for acetic acid. So we can take a look at the structural formula, the full structural formula, or the ball and stick formula, or we can write it in the condensed formula. So that would be CH3, and then we'd have COOH. And remember, that doesn't mean you have two oxygens bonded to each other. It's just the simple way of saying that. It's the way that organic chemists say it. And then, of course, we can do plus H2O, and that's a fancy L for liquid. And then we have the two arrows there, and that's telling you that we're at equilibrium. So all of the components are existing at equilibrium. So you still have some reactant molecules there. And then we'd have CH3, because that's the CH3 part. And then how we write this on the end without the hydrogen is we put COO minus AQ plus H3O plus AQ. Now you could write this condensed formula as a molecular formula, and you would do that like this. You would write C2H4O2, like that. So a million different ways that we can write this. Now, if we want to write the Ka for this equation, what we do is we write the concentration of the products on top of the concentration of the reactants and we ignore the water like we just learned. So here we have the acetate ion. So we say the concentration of that times the concentration of H3O plus or H plus because we know that we use them interchangeably times the concentration of the intact acid. So that would be 
DHA. Now acetic acid is a weak acid. So there should be a number value here, not just large. And if we go back to the chart and we find acetic acid, it's right here. We can see that it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So this is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 right there. Okay, so we've got some questions here. It says, write the equilibrium constant expression for the dissociation of hydrocyanic acid in water. So let's just practice this. So we've got HCN. So that's our acid. So that would be HA in the generic form, okay? So we're going to put AQ because we're putting it in water. And hydrocyanic acid is an acid, so it's going to release its what? It's going to release its H+. Plus, and that H+, plus is going to hop on what? It's going to hop on a water. So we're going to put water. And remember, we don't put H2O AQ because we don't say we're going to dissolve water in water. We just say water, the pure liquid. And then we go ahead and write the double arrows because hydrocyanic acid is a weak acid. So we're going to have reactant that sticks around as well as making product. And the hydrogen hops onto the water, so we're going to get H3O plus, and we put AQ. And then what is left behind when the hydrogen comes off of HCN? We're going to have CN minus, and then put the AQ there. So we have the cyanide polyatomic ion. And if you're wondering, how do they know that it was a minus? Well, H3O always has a plus on it. So on this side, we created a plus one. And you have to have conservation of charge. So we had to create a minus one because plus one and minus one make a net charge of what? Of zero, okay? And we had a charge of zero here and water has a neutral charge, so we have zero and zero on the reactant side, on the left-hand side. So we have a net charge of zero on the reactant side, so we have to have a net charge of zero on the product side also, okay? So that's how we would write the expression for, uh, sorry, the equation for um, hydrocyanic acid. So writing the equilibrium constant expression now, K for the association of an acid in water would be Ka is equal to what goes on top, the product or the reactant? The product. So we would go ahead and we'd put H3O plus and we'd put Cn minus and on the bottom we put what? We put the intact acid. So the concentration of hydrocyanic acid and for Ka, we ignore the water, even though it is a reactant also, okay? Now, also, you guys, you could have put the concentration of H plus for H3O plus there. And remember that the concentration of the product goes on the top. So don't get those switched around because our brain wants to do the reactant on the top, but it's actually the product on the top. Okay, so write the equilibrium expression for the dissociation of hydrofluoric acid in water. So we need to write the equation first. So we have hydrofluoric acid in water, and that's going to react to form H3O plus AQ plus what? plus F minus AQ. Now, if you guys wrote F minus first plus H3O plus second, would that be okay if you just switch these two around? Absolutely, because these reactants over here are giving those products over there and they're floating around in a beaker and it doesn't matter what order you write them in the equation, as long as the reactants are on the reactant side and the products are on the product side. So either way that you want, go ahead. So if you guys wanted to write F minus before H3O plus, that's fine and dandy. Okay, so writing the Ka for this one. 
so we'd have the concentration of, let's do F minus first, just to switch it up a little bit. And then multiply that by H3O plus. Again, does not matter which order you put it in. And then on the bottom, we want what? We want the intact acid. So we've got HF right there, and we're going to ignore the water. Okay, number three says the Ka for HCN is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10, and the Ka for HF is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Which acid is stronger? Well, for most of us, the 10 right there looks like it's bigger than the 4, but those are negatives. So the negative 10 means you're going to take this decimal and move it. I don't know what the heck that is, but okay. So we're going to move it over 10 spots. Now we just have a circle there. I'll just make a little person. Hi, students. I'm Professor Gray. How are you? I hope you're enjoying this class. Okay, so we would take this decimal and move it to the left 10 times, but with this one, we just move the decimal to the left four times. So that means that the negative 4, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 is actually bigger. So this one right here has the bigger Ka. So HF is the stronger acid. And if you guys don't believe me, let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. So we'll find HCN back on our chart back here, right here. So we've got 4.0 times 10 to the negative 10. And then as we're going up, increasing acid strength up here, we will find hydrofluoric acid, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And you can see that it's higher up on the acid strength scale up there. So there you go. All right, going back to the next slide back here. It says, predict whether the equilibrium for each of the following reactions favors the reactants or the products, okay? Now, if your reaction favors the products, it means that it's making more products than the reactants. If your reaction favors the reactants, it means that it favors having reactants around, okay? So some students, that gets mixed up in their mind. But if your reaction favors the reactants, it favors having reactants around. If your reaction favors products, it favors making the products. It favors having products around, okay? So what we're going to do with these reactions is we're going to look for the acid on each side of the equation. And we're going to pair, compare the acid strengths. So here we've got phosphoric acid. And we have water. And here we have hydronium. And we have dihydrogen phosphate. Okay, phosphoric acid or water, which one is the acid, you guys? Probably the one that has the name acid in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up the Ka for phosphoric acid. So we go back to where? We go back to the chart because you don't need to memorize the Ka's for all the acids. That would be pretty cruel of me to do that to you. So... Finding phosphoric acid. Doodly doodly do. Phosphoric acid. Where are you? Here we are, right here. Phosphoric acid H3PO4, 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, then we go to the other side and who is the acid? Hydronium or dihydrogen phosphate? The one that has the positive charge or the one that has the negative charge? It's probably the one that has the positive charge. Remembering that our acids tend to be neutral or positively charged, 
and our bases tend to be neutral or negatively charged. Also, if you've got hydronium and something else, there's a good chance that your base is hydronium because H3O plus is going to want to give away that hydrogen, that H plus, that proton. And the Ka of H3O plus is 1.0. And how did I know that? Well, I've been doing chemistry for more than two decades, so some things kind of stick in your brain, and that one's not too hard. We've got hydronium right here, and that's a Ka of 1. Again, you guys do not have to memorize that. I just knew that because I get paid to know these things. Alrighty, so we go back here, and we go, okay, what number is bigger? 1 or 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. And if you guys forget what to do with that, what you would do is you'd go 1, 2, 3. So you'd have 0 0.0075 versus 1.0. Which one is bigger? 1.0. So hydronium is the stronger acid. So what that does is it means that you get a little bit of product and you have mostly reactants sitting around. So instead of this, sometimes you'll see arrows that look like that, which indicates you just make a little bit of product. Now remember we said that phosphoric acid is a weak acid. So this makes sense right here because a weak acid is only going to give away a little bit of H+. So that means that there's only a little bit of H plus to hop on your water and make a little bit of H3O plus, okay? There's a lot of reactant that just sits around and does nothing because the acid is a weak acid, okay? So if you have a reaction that favors reactant sitting there not doing anything, is that reactant favored or product favored? That is reactant favored. It means reactants sitting around. So this is reactant favored. It does not mean it's it favors the reactants turning into products. It does not mean that, okay? It means that it favors the reactants staying as reactants. Alrighty? Okay, so going down to B, we've got ammonia and we have hydronium. Now, ammonia looks like it has a lot of hydrogens to give away, so it might be an acid, but look, you're pairing it with hydronium. So there's probably a good chance that hydronium is your acid there because hydronium is a pretty good acid. Also, this has got a nitrogen on it. And remember when we said that Weak bases are a lot of times the sneaky bases with nitrogens because nitrogen likes to grab a hydrogen and an H plus acceptor is a base. So we can also look at the other side of the equation. Ammonia right here accepted an H plus, accepted a proton, and it went to ammonium, which is its conjugate acid. Okay, that means that hydronium behaved as the acid, it gave away its H+, plus, so it was an H plus donor, and it became water, which is its conjugate base. So we're going to look at acid versus acid. So we have hydronium versus ammonium. And we already know that the Ka for hydronium is what? We already did it. It's one, it's up here. We already looked that up. And the Ka for ammonium, we have to look at the chart for that. So we'll go back here and we'll go, okie dokie, where's ammonium? Well, we didn't even get to the first page where the strong acids are. We're down here. So ammonium is right here, ammonium. And we've got 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, 
so this one over here is the stronger acid. So it's going to force the equilibrium to go that way. So that means that we've got the little arrow going that way. So up on 4A, we had hydronium, which was a stronger acid on the product side. And the stronger acid will force a reaction to happen and it'll push it the other way, okay? So that meant the hydronium pushed it back to the reactant side. So it said, come here with H2PO4 minus, and they made these guys over here. Now, hydronium is the stronger acid, so it's saying, come here to the ammonia, and they're going this way. So you guys can see that right here. Stronger acid is forcing the reaction to happen. So we're getting a lot of products. So we have a lot of products sitting around. So this arrow right here is saying the equilibrium shifted over there. This is product favored because we have a lot of products sitting around. All righty. That brings us to KB. Now, if we look back at the chart, we'll see that we have been working with KA all along. So it's kind of hard to see that little letter right there, but that's an A. And over here on this side, we have KB. And that's the K for basis, but we hardly ever use it, but I still need to teach it to you guys. And it works pretty much the same way as Ka does. So this is the base ionization constant. So it's the equilibrium constant for the ionization or the dissociation reaction um, of a base and uh, its reaction with water. So if we take a look at this reaction right here, and we did a normal K for this. Okay, so um, the equation for it, what we would have is the concentration of products on the top. So hydroxide plus BH plus, so that's the conjugate acid of B. And on the bottom, we would have the concentration of B times the concentration of water. And we're gonna do the same thing with the water here that we did with the Ka. So the change in concentration when we have this reaction happening of hydroxide, the OH minus, the BH plus, and the B, uh, they're meaningful because it's like going from $4 to $5. It, it, it means something because there's not very much of it around. So when you lose some of it or you gain some of it, you can tell. But there's so much water there that when you use up one for this reaction, the reaction goes in the reverse order and you make an extra one, you don't notice the difference. So we can approximate and we can ignore it there. Or we can go ahead and say, okay, let's multiply both sides by concentration of water that cancels out there. And we can call this KB. So you guys can think about it either way. Okay. Okay. So anyways, what we don't see is we don't see H2O plus on the bottom there, but we still have the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactant. And if KB is large, so if you have a lot of products, you're making a lot of hydroxide there. You're making a lot of base. So that means you have a strong base. If you have a small KB, it means that your numerator up here is small. So you're not making very much hydroxide. Not much OH minus is coming off, so that means you have a weak base. And what we'll notice on the chart is down at the bottom down here, you see large for your very strong bases. And as we go up here, it gets weaker and weaker, so the numbers get smaller and smaller. So you'll see minus 7 right here, minus 8 right here minus 11 here, minus 14 for water, and then very small on your KB, 
way up here where you have very weak bases. So that means that you have almost no numerator in your KB expression. So if you have almost none of this, and you have a very large denominator, then your KB will be small. All right, so we've done regular K, we've done KA, KB, and that's gonna bring us to KW, but before we do KW, let's just take a look at this simple KB right here. So we've got ammonia reacting with water and that gives us ammonium and hydroxide. So we have the products on the top and we have the base on the bottom and we do not see water there, which is to be expected. So that's how we would write the KB expression. And then in the next lecture, we will go on to KW. Super exciting stuff, right, you guys? Okay, see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.